So I just think it's such a good point that we re there really is a need for a training specific to homeschoolers, right? Because homeschooling is not school at home. It's very different, I think, than education, um, <laughs> not schooling. <laughs> That's exactly, you know what, I say that to uh, so many homeschooling parents I talk to in my one-on-one -on -one sessions and in my, in my membership, that I love to say, instead of describing ourselves as teachers, let's think of ourselves as uh, our job is to facilitate activities, experiences. Uh, it's really much more about experiential learning because I think when we start thinking, okay, we're going to teach this thing, then we get very controlling. <laughs> and your kids go. Yeah, they do. They just gloss over, their eyes gloss over, and they, they, aren't, uh, they aren't as engaged, right? Yeah. And that's one of the things that has drawn me so much to the Waldorf approach from the beginning is this idea of the lively arts and that we can uh, bring in poetry and music and movement and painting and drawing and all storytelling, all of these very active and engaging ways of bringing the learning, right? And and that's the magic of Tappert is that the, the parents get to experience that for once. Instead of reading about it on a page and then trying to do it with your child, come to Taproot and we can be the teacher and you could be the student for once. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So uh, we, we talked about starting in the summer of 2007. I think there were some years I remember one year where there were only seven participants. Do you remember that? Yeah, we couldn't even pay ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. So Barbara had the training on her farm for, I I should have looked this up, but at least, what, 10 years, nine years? Yeah, it was about nine or 10. I, I don't remember either. Yeah. And then we moved to uh, the Cuyahoga Valley Environmental Education Center, which so Barbara and I both live in Ohio. She lives more in central Ohio and I'm up in Cleveland on Lake Erie. So we moved to the Cuyahoga Valley, which is in between us. And then uh, we were there for three years, I think. Yep. And then we moved to Camp Asbury in Hiram. And, and a camp, a summer camp, is such a perfect oh, yeah. spot for us. So we are so excited to go back there this year for the first time in three years because we've been online during this pandemic. And, uh, and now we're going back to camp. Yep. So let's talk about some favorite memories. What are your, some of your favorite uh, memories or moments from Taproot's past that come to mind? Well, one I think is getting up in the morning and picking lettuce and tomatoes and things like that for our meals because we have big gardens here. Um, another one is one of our presenters now whose oldest child is going to college this year, um, came one of those first years with her infant and three other children, and they camped up on top of the hill, and she washed out diapers under, <laughs> under a pitcher pump, and, <laughs> and now she's one of our best presenters and yeah. it just has so much experience with homeschooling. It's just amazing. Yeah. So that's a happy memory. And that baby is probably the, the one who volunteers to be the, the student in her demonstration yeah. videos, which is so much fun. Many, yeah, many about, things. Yeah. He's about 12, 13, 14 years old, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So that's Rebecca. And, uh, and she is, it's great to have her on board because she's so good at teaching math and science. And uh, I tend toward the language arts and history, right? So that's really fun. 
And I remember one summer when your dog Star got skunked. (laughs) (laughs) And we're trying to keep Star out of the farmhouse and the barn and the and the solar house and and Star would have nothing to do with that. So I think we all smelled like skunk that whole weekend. (laughs) It didn't go away. Didn't go away. Uh, And I, there's so many things about Tepper, but I love getting up early. And this is true even now at Camp Asbury, just getting up early and going outside at your place. It was out on the front porch of the farmhouse. And at Camp Asbury, there's a beautiful deck off the retreat center overlooking the forest and the and the fields and there's a lake beautiful go out there with more a morning cup of coffee it's so much fun uh and then for me the big circles right the the morning circle that we do with the whole group is so incredibly magical and opportunities sing beautiful rounds and do spiral walks and all kinds of of wonderful fun activities yeah and of course yoga and nature walks and campfires and all the amazing workshops, which are really, really a beautiful thing. And we have such an amazing team now. We have a Taproot team of, uh, I think, a dozen people, including presenters and assistants. Yep. Yeah. So that has grown over the years and almost everyone on the team originally came to Taproot as a parent, right? As a homeschooling parent. As a homeschooling parent, so that's that's so wonderful. Uh, so, what what do you love the most about Taproot? Just seeing people feel better about themselves and what they're doing and how they're doing it. It's so easy as a parent to just feel like, oh, I'm not very good at this, and oh, but <laughs> they kind of boost each other up and laugh at each other's mistakes and and just have a really good time doing it and yes. and i think that's what me, means as much as the learning that takes place is the the camaraderie among these people yes oh my gosh and and then as you as you mentioned uh a sense of confidence that comes from really mostly realizing that there's no one right way to do this, <laughs> right? There's so many ways to bring these wonderful activities to your home and to gather with parents from, I mean, we've had parents as far away as Washington State, Puerto Rico, California, British Columbia, you know, all over uh, North America and it is quite a gathering uh and by the end of the weekend that's so true i think there's almost a transformation that people experience in in their own journey as as the leader in their families right and in their homeschools yeah such a beautiful thing well, so for Taproot 2022, if you, if those of you listening are listening in real time, we're recording this in the spring of 2022, and Barbara will be presenting workshops on kindergarten, on learning to read, which is a huge question that people often have, learning to read the Waldorf way. She's helping out with an astronomy workshop for the whole family, and I'm so excited that Quimby is coming. Your husband Quimby, he's the the one that one of the I ones. Gonna... Yes, so great. And then, of course, gardening and food production, which is something that Barbara has such a strong passion for, doing gardening with children. So that's beautiful. And I'll be doing language arts and history for the earlier grades, grades one through four, grades five through eight. Uh, I'll be doing Book Hearth with Allison, where we build a whole block around one book. That's so much fun to do. And then homeschooling high school, because we've been getting so many questions about that. Um, And that's one of the ways I think, I'd love to hear your reflections on this, Barbara, too. Uh, One of the ways I think Taproot has evolved over the years, through the years, is that 
we've come to we've moved away from doing each grade in its own individual silo to really looking at the the family unit and because so many of us have multiple ages right so how can we combine some blocks how can we homeschool multiple ages at the same time without separately preparing for each individual grade i think that's so important for the home setting it yeah. definitely it it's it's just so hard to well it's impossible to remember if you have five children you're going to memorize five stories and you're going to um have five lessons and what's the little one going to be doing while you're teaching your sixth grader yes you know you just can't do you just can't do it that way but you can do a really successful program by combining a lot of things and exposing your younger ones to things maybe a little early and having your older ones put up with the little ones to do something else for them yeah that makes them less selfish about what they're doing mm -hmm. and all in all it makes for a, a, not just the learning but it's the empathy and the living in a family and having good relationships with people and being the oldest who has to set an example and being the youngest who has to try to keep up and still feel good about himself you know all of these things are really important learnings that kids don't get in a school where they're just isolated with their peers yeah so it, it really makes a difference so true. I so often find myself saying, like, consider your family to be your community, right? Yep. Rudolf Steiner talked so much about, um, you know, how his inspiration was to invite the teachers to create a community right in their classroom. And so as a family, we're a community. That's our community. Uh, and I remember you, Barbara, inspired me so much early on when you would uh, make reference to the one room schoolhouse. And that helped me so much to visualize um, my own homeschool as just a rich learning environment. Yep. Yeah, beautiful. That's a, a beautiful thing. So what are you looking forward to most? this year for taproot 2022 well for me some of these people are ones who came to that first year 16 years ago and they had preschoolers that are going to college now and i really like to keep up with these children and see what they're doing and how they're yeah. doing it and all that so mm -hmm. that's that's one of my big things. And of course, I always look forward to the people who are coming to kindergarten for the first time with the, just starting out. It, it's a real joy to see them wanting to do this and being willing to give their daily lives to their children and mm -hmm. not give their children to some institution to get taught. Yeah. And, and Barbara, there's just a I experience over and over again, just so much love for you, right? For the people who are returning, like you have had a, such an impact on so many families and that is beautiful. That it, is a it's beautiful. a very good feeling, definitely. <laughs> yeah, and then when the new families come too, I think um, you have a gift of helping people feel much more at ease. So when those parents, who who have kindergarten age children come to your workshops you know i think they leave having a much different picture of what kindergarten at home might look like than perhaps they came with and it's a much more uh relaxing and uh engaging and fun experience right after they have taken your workshops so thank you <laughs> it's so much fun to be doing this together and so you know after we moved taproot from barbara's farm i started doing the organizing which barbara had done for years herself 
And, uh, and I have so enjoyed keeping this going. It is an amazing experience. Well, you, you have the computer expertise and the technology to keep up with it. And I, I can't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You do well, a really good job with these podcasts and, and your, your weekly newsletter and, and all of mm. those things are really helpful to people. Well, thank you. And it's so great to partner with you on the, on the Taproot teacher training. I just love that we get to continue that together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And okay. Last question then, and we will be wrapping this up. So why would you recommend parents come to Taproot? Well, mainly I think to feel more comfortable about the whole process of homeschooling because our, our media and the other thing is, is mothers and mothers-in-law and aunts and uncles who give you a hard time about what you're doing when you're homeschooling. Well, why don't you just send them to school and they're not reading yet. What's the matter? Mm. And I think that's one of the things that people go away from this weekend realizing that our pe people are sending their children off to college with no high school and no, no school record of any kind or grades of any kind. And they're going to really good schools. Mm -hmm. So it, it gives people the confidence to do it and the confidence to be able, able to explain to other people what they're doing and why. Yes, and I've, I've seen so many people who had to start homeschooling during the pandemic because mm -hmm. the schools were on again, off again, and the teachers mm -hmm. weren't there and the computer did, especially around here, computers just don't work. <laughs> In such a rural Unless area, you yeah. pay a lot. And mm -hmm. a lot of people around here can't afford that. And yeah. so they opted to homeschool and some of them are really happy with it mm. really happy with it and their children are happier and they're just why didn't I do this sooner <laughs> yes so, so you know that's the kind of thing that people come away with from this conference I love that and and you know like we mentioned before I think there is a certain not only confidence but a a sense of like who we are as the as the leader, the homeschool parent in this whole um, family constellation. And, and it is amazing. You, I love that you brought that up that probably at least a third, maybe even half of the presenters have now graduated children, right? And who have gone on to college and other um, second post-secondary learning experiences and and that brings a real richness there's so much experience in this team of presenters and such a variety too so uh yeah i think also i will just underscore that feeling of of you, that you're not alone <laughs> right there are all, so many people all over the world doing this bringing this these wonderful experiential uh, hands-on engaging approach approaches to their children at home. And it's a wonderful, um, that camar camaraderie, that sense of camaraderie is huge, I think, right? And it's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we definitely know how to have fun. So. Uh, so a few tips here, you can find out more about Taproot by going to artofhomeschooling.com slash Taproot. That's the general page, and it will then give you a link. So if you want to go find out more information about Taproot 2022 in particular, you can do that. Uh, if you 